people want to explore the, the, the outer edges of who they can be without that fear or that judgment. Yo, Vivek can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. We're going to love him regardless. Pause. Mm, see? What? Ooh, what? It's that, though. It's that right there, what? OK? It's the fear of Doug sounding gay so awful that you need to qualify it with the word pause? I mean, can't you just say I love you, Vivek? No, straight men don't talk like that. No, me sorry. <laughs> Some just feel the need to just hold on to this role that they don't have to. Like, they have to keep up this persona of this tough, macho, strong man. It's like, no, you can be emotional. You can let your feelings out. You can show that you're vulnerable. Like, you don't have to even dress a certain way. Like, if you want to explore different patterns and textures, wear skirts, like, you can. Like, you don't have to fit, you don't have to stay in, like, this mold, this shape, and just stick with that. You can be whatever, so. Yeah, it's definitely the shame, honestly, for me. I've just seen boys around me growing up who have been, yeah, told not to cry or not to do certain things just because it's not what society is teaching going to everyone else to do. And that's mainly the toxic part about it. It's just the shaming others. And I feel like just as a society, we have to like get out of doing that because it's holding all men of all races back in general. Even hearing when people say the terms boys will be boys, no, boys should still be held accountable for their actions. And at the same time, on the flip side, they should also be able to show their emotions and, you know, be vulnerable, just like women. So I just think not being afraid to have those conversations and call out people who are, um, you know, speaking about it in a toxic way. I definitely agree with you both. I definitely think it starts when you're younger. And like, I believe all of us should be able to get our emotions out the way that it's meant to, because if not, we kind of go crazy. And that's why mental health is such an issue right now, because we're taught to always suck it up, especially us as young black people. Uh, for me, I feel like because of that, and because a lot of men are brought up that way, they take it out on the women. So women who are strong-minded individuals and have their own shit together, they're seen as a problem or it's an issue or something. I'm always used to going into the studio and just being surrounded by men. Now, most of the times I meet cool guys who are very welcoming and they're open. And when I play them my stuff, they start being nice to me. But a lot of times there's the ones who are so in their head and they're like, well, a woman isn't supposed to be doing this. They don't really listen to your creative ideas. They don't really listen to what you have to say. But that's also my favorite thing as a woman is that even though we're underestimated, we can prove the world wrong. And I just, I think it's really important for us to discuss this, to try to figure out solutions, to break it down. But I feel like by the way this generation is kind of moving, we're kind of breaking those norms and we're kind of breaking the boundaries and the barriers. As a society, we demonize femininity so much. That's what I don't think we've ever got to the question of yet of that. Why is emotion so bad? Why is it that we don't want to be this way? Why is it that we don't want to give, I think, women their flowers for a lot of the things that they do in their contributions? Because what we just saw the other day was is that that's bringing us out of an entire situation when we're talking about our national climate. So we have to acknowledge all of those things in that conversation. But th the first step to getting there, I think, is for us to realize that it's interwoven within a lot of systems. So to deconstruct it, we have to actively be anti, you know, toxic masculinity in our everyday lives and every day that we walk. But to be anti, you know, toxic masculinity, you have to be anti-sexist. You have to truly commit to in every shape and space and, and, and dissecting yourself. Because I say at the same time, I am, I'm a gay black man. But at the end of the day, I am a man. And I do still have that mobility of when I'm going into spaces and into conversations. So I have to make sure with me and my conscious mind that I'm saying, hey, when I am reevaluating the room, why are there no women here? Does nobody see a problem with that? So you have to, you have to very much so, you know, consistently be against this and work against it. And that starts with those subtle steps that we take collectively. And I think to Chloe's point, as a, as a generation, we are moving forward. But I would say that we have a lot more work to go. First of all, thank you all for, for everyone's contributions because 
um, me being in the position that I am, you know, I can be sub, uh, subject to when I think of toxic masculinity, only thinking of how I'm receiving that side, you know, so just seeing how, all, uh, all, all the stories of how toxic masculinity not only affects men, but obviously, holy shit, affects everyone around it too, you know what I mean? So. It, uh, thank you for bringing me a part of the conversation to, to have my eyes even more uh, open to, to that side. But in regards to, you know, Vivek, I guess we'll go with the traditional feeling of how, uh, how my thought of it was that it's it's hard for him. Well, actually, you know, it's not hard for Vivek to explore who he is. I would like to say he's very bold in his decisions, but, you know, even his boys, the people that he is closest to put him down for some of the um bold choices that he wants to make people want to e explore the, the the outer edges of who they can be without that fear or that judgment love love that jordan if i could um chime in i just wanted to listen um just in case anyone in the chat was queer kai you killed it brother thank you for your perspective incredible um and i, and I wanted women to speak as well my thing with being a, a cis gender male, I find that uh, men try to protect their masculinity. And I feel like that's a, a lot of the reason why um, they push away anything, like Kai said, a feminine movement or, or, or anything that can be deemed is, oh, um, I'm not gonna seem like I'm more manly than this guy. It's like a trophy, right? And I had to explain to someone over, you know, over the summer, a friend of mine, we were at lunch and they said, why does there have to be a Black Lives Matter protest and an LGBTQ plus Black Lives Matter protest? And I said, well, it's because there's a whole oppressed group of people within a bigger oppressed group of people. And the people that are in that bigger group don't even accept this group that feel like, well, not only am I black, but people also don't accept me because of all of these things that I am naturally. And I said that, you know, that's why, you know, LGBTQ plus people deserve their moment. I second what Diggy says. I mean, you guys are definitely our future. And so everything we talked about today, I mean, it's up to you guys to, to, to make the change. So, and I'm so proud of all of you.